You came back. You, you, you brought your crew. One, two, three, four. There's a handful of us, and we're just walking around. We actually support and love Israel. Uh, the only thing that we're talking to uh, the Jewish people about is uh, uh, God. The Bible says God hated Esau because he gave up his birthright. That's what God says. And how much more modern-day Israel does God hate because they're giving away that land? Even if America says give it away, if I were involved in Israel, don't give it to your nation, your enemy. That is yours of God. If God aided Esau just for that birthright, don't give up that land. And that's taken, take it from me, just a Gentile dog. I'm not even a true Hebrew. That's not true. Aren't you a pastor? Yes, I am. There's no term Gentile dog. I, I, I will say that about myself. You know, Gentile... Judaism is very respectful to all people. It is. And it, 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 it says that Jews are, are responsible uh, to, to, to do the laws that are commanded by God that for them in particular. And non-Jews have their own particular laws, and, and, and we are required to be respectful to and everyone. And in America, 2018, you're obligated to say this. I can go to some Orthodox areas where they will actually refer to you as a Gentile dog. It's not a problem. I'm just happy being... Not, a, not in America. Uh, we are in America. No, no, but uh, where have you gone where anyone referred to you in such uh, a way? Actually, Brooklyn. Actually, Brooklyn, New York, and certain parts here in West L.A. Um, on Passover. On Passover, we... Well, what what were you doing? Uh, we were preaching uh, the Messiah. And so they didn't take that too kindly. But at least they didn't beat me like Dearborn did. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity rebuker. Uh, let me ask you this. What's your take on Islam as, as Jewish? So it, part of Islam is uh, to uh, convert everyone else. And, and they, they, they're, they're really a, they, they pose as a religion. But in many ways, they have a militaristic. And, um, and, and they're, 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 they're trying to conquer the world. And, and that infringes on other people's rights to believe. Absolutely. And, and so I believe that Jews and Christians need, need to unite in order to support a belief in God and, and to uh, rally around our common enemy, which is this Islam, which threatens both of us. And they are more than an enemy. Uh, they, they are wicked. And matter of fact, I'll be very blunt because I usually am. They are the bastard religion. That's according to our book. They are the bastard child, bastard religion. Nobody likes to use the B word because it's not politically correct, but that's who they are. And uh, uh, we are thankful for our military to support Israel. We're the 500 pound gorilla. Israel is only the size of Rhode Island surrounded by enemy. So, what, so what would you say about mainline Protestant movements that are backing a, st a strong US pressure to create a Palestinian Muslim state? Uh, I think most Christians are lukewarm. I preach against Christianity more than any other religion. They're about as lukewarm and phony as it gets. And so uh, when they actually support Palestine, that really gets my blood boiling. God gave that real estate to Israel. They're to give it up, even if our, our government says to give it to them. No, that was God's given right to you. And like I said, if God's going to hate Esau for giving up his birthright, how much more that land that God gave you? We're in the trouble today because Israel gave up that land. And so, uh, what, would, what would happen to America if uh, America loses its favor with God on, on the account of creating a Palestinian state carved out of the Holy Land? That's a fantastic question. What would happen to America if we actually turn our back on Israel and allow the enemy? The same thing that happened to Europe, Napoleon, all of the, Germany, they all have one common denominator. They despise Israel at one way. So I support our President Trump who actually on this 70th year anniversary for Israel is bringing the embassy where it should be. All the other presidents said it should have happened. He'd done it. We've learned by other countries who, who were actually big but had one problem. They despised Israel. Uh, we don't. This is why we're willing to send our trope, our soldiers to help them and to keep that battle out in that dumb sandbox that those Muslims call home and not bring it here to America. Now, America has never fought on behalf of Israel thus far, but if Israel attacks preemptively or gets involved, engaged with Iran and maybe Russia, uh, what do you think America ought to do? Sit idly by? Uh, I think uh, that, uh, that statement that America has never been involved is not true. 
I believe our government is so much involved in warring with Israel, giving them bombs, giving them intel. I think we've done it, but we've learned not to have our fingerprints behind it. Um, don't forget, it was because of what took place in Germany right now that, that America got involved and shut down Hitler. So we did get involved in a lot of, in a lot of ways. And if, uh, if they start bombing Israel, I don't think Trump would lose one meal or miss a sleep if, and he would go in and attack it, and he has my vote to do so. I would support my president on that. Again, I'm a Christian that loves Israel, and if you're a Christian that actually supports Palestine, I say turn in your Jesus Christ uh, badge. You are nothing about God nor the Bible. And so uh, uh, we need to support Israel, pray for Israel, and still continue to be the 300-pound gorilla and, and actually give those Muslims their 72 virgins if that's what they want. Why is Israel so important to Christians? It's Bible prophecy. And it's not Israel in the sense of the people, it's the piece of real estate. You look at Israel today, you got more homosexual parades in Jerusalem than they do here in Los Angeles. You've got a lot of things going on, but that real estate has always been very much Bible prophecy. And so we need to keep our ears to the track when it comes to Israel. If there is a Jesus and he does return to earth, where would he return? Uh, he's not going to uh, touch down, he's gonna come in the sky. And so uh, I, I believe when he does return, uh, the Jews do believe that, that uh, the Messiah is gonna have a king mentality. Uh, but there is a suffering Messiah too, if you read the book properly. And so Jesus Christ suffered. When he comes back again, he's gonna be that king in the crowd and he's going to rule mankind. So, so the Jews are waiting for the Messiah. The Christians are waiting for the recoming of the Messiah. So aren't we both in agreement? Aren't we both waiting for the same thing? That's a great question. But the, uh, unfortunately, the Jews killed the Messiah, uh, which is why, uh, you know, you had the temple built in Jerusalem. That's where Moses commanded uh, that animal sacrifice. But right now, today, who has that temple? Um, as far as I understand history, as for all accounts, the Romans killed the Messiah, not the Jews. Why do you say that? That's because the, that, that's who took them. But who owns that piece of real estate now? Right now where the temple was, there's a mosque from the bastard child. Shouldn't that be maybe because, oh, I don't know, Jews killed the Messiah? Shouldn't somebody scratch their head and say, wow, wait a minute, you know, look at what's going on. We fought in a war against Hitler who was making lampshades out of us and uh, we need to actually get uh, help from America. Where was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? To me, I believe when you turn your back on God, as Hebrews have done, they killed their prophets, they killed God's spokesmen, and then when the Messiah came, they put him on the cross. Uh, so me as a Gentile, that's what I do. I believe that Jesus was the sacrifice, and as he was our sacrifice lamb, much like Jewish people needed the sacrifice lamb for the temple. So it sounds like you're using the suffering of the Jews as a uh, to justify uh, why Judaism, why, why your criticism of Judaism. No, I'm, using, I'm wondering, I'm wondering why that would even happen unless you provoke the God of the Bible. Let's understand that if you provoke the God of the Bible, things are going to happen. So uh, that's all I'm saying. I don't rejoice when people get suffering. I just wonder why God would allow certain things to happen. And if you follow the trail, you'll see it. It's pretty clear, at least in my opinion. Um, as, a, as a Jew who believes that God is good and that history has evil in it and, and evil people, I, b I believe that the suffering that many Jews experience are because the world is not perfected, because Mes the Messiah has not come yet. And so um, when I see the, 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 that the Temple Mount is, is, is not possessed by the Jews, it makes me long more for the Messiah, which, which would put me more in a, in, in, together with the Christians and, 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 and to side with the Christians in, in this common cause, whereas you're taking the, the, the Temple Mount and, and creating d divisiveness and, and criticizing the Jews, and, and so that hurts me personally. Because I think that could bring us together and you're, you're making it divide us. All I'm doing is simply using Old Testament history to make the call. I'm not going to get up in the morning and just, oh, I'll go this way. It is Old Testament history. 
You disobeyed God, he turns you over to his enemies. I didn't write that. It's been in, it's been in those five books for quite some time. You obey God, he blesses you. You disobey him, he curses you with enemy. And so, so that's where I'm making that call. Um, what you're saying sounds a lot like Deuteronomy, Devarim, what we, we say in, in, in Judaism. However, if you, if you look at other books in the Tanakh, in the larger scope of Judaism, you'll come across Job, uh, who suffered, yet he was a righteous man. And uh, there's been many righteous people who suffered, not necessarily because of flaws within their uh, re religious practice or understanding, uh, but just because this, this world is full of suffering and God uh, gives us tests. And, and through these tests, we, 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 we prove ourselves. And, and so um, I, it, it bothers me that you're taking a lot of the struggles that Judaism are experiencing today and in the past and, and then are, 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 are creating a judgment on Jews. Because I don't think it's our job to judge other people, it's God's job to judge us. Well, I think it's good to look at history and make a judgment on that. And that's what I'm doing. I'm going even beyond the first five books in the Bible. You got examples of Israel disobeying God and they paid a price for it. So history's there. And so uh, uh, when, when Hitler comes along and does something like he did, does anybody stop and say, could we have offended the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? What did we do? I mean, like I said, to me, having in the very piece of real estate where that holy temple once stood, now is a mosque. Wow, that's that's. Uh, I find that uh, offended. It, and I understand you may not understand what I'm talking about. It's not that I'm looking for an argument. I just simply say history in in that Old Testament. You obey God, He blesses you. You disobey God, He turns you over to the enemies. And so uh, uh, that's something that nobody likes to talk about. Sounds a little negative, but hey, the Ten Commandments is pretty negative. It has a whole lot of thou shalt nots. You as a Jew, you should understand that. Like I said, I'm just a Gentile. That's simply what I read, and uh, I think it's pretty accurate. Not much, not much beyond that, though. Um, I, I believe many Jews. I know, uh, as as a Jewish person, I've uh, I, I've discussed many Jews who who are always looking internally, trying to correct ourselves, trying to improve the way we practice. Uh, Judaism itself is dynamic. It doesn't move as quickly as our larger society. I mean, every week you have a new technology and the world has changed so rapidly that people often jump to Judaism and saying, hey, why aren't you changing like the rest of the society? And Judaism works at a slower pace. We're, we're the oldest religion on the, in the world and, and so we, 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 we go at a slower pace and, and we're trying to adjust to the world around us. And uh, one, one thing that we value very, very much is, is that we, we try to appreciate other people like ourselves that are searching for God and that have a sincere desire to do good in the world. And our Christians, brothers and sisters, are doing that. And so we try to uh, give them a lot of respect and, and don't, we don't try to infringe upon their beliefs. And, um, and, and when I hear you speak, I, I hear some of that respect. Yeah, you you, res you respond. You, you recognize Israel and you recognize the Jewish people as 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 an important place in the world and in bringing Messiah. And so I appreciate that. Uh, but then you also um, take upon yourself to criticize Israel and the Jewish people and and to judge them. And um, and we we would be scared to do that for ourselves. And 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 I I don't think that's. Is, is a good position for you to take because I think it's better for you to, to, to try to respect and love other people. Well, that's and and, and if, with, with Islam, I understand you have a criticism because they are actually, um, they perceive you as a threat and you're responding to that. But Jews do not perceive you as a threat. Jews are trying to love you and I think it would be more productive if you love them back. And, and, and this is how we love back, by telling them the truth. I can, I can give you a handshake and a hug and uh, buy you a, uh, a hot dog. That doesn't mean love. Anybody can do that. Love is telling you the truth. Why don't we have that temple? That's a legitimate question. Why uh, don't we have the blood sacrifice that Moses commands? That was a purpose of the temple. How did, how did Jewish people 
atone for the forgiveness of sin when there's no blood sacrifice. Somebody needs to bring this up. And so, uh, you know, you brought up guys like Job. Uh, I understand persecution. I've been uh, jailed and beat more times than you will ever know. More times than you will ever know. Mainly by religious people. And that's because it's persecuted. That's because people hate me for who I am. But I'm talking about Israel as a nation. Don't turn your back on God. Uh, you know, that's, that's where you're going to have issues. Uh, stick with the, with Moses, what Moses said. When you have so many homosexual parades in Israel, Jerusalem, yeah, you're going to anger God. But nobody wants to bring that up. And so no, it, that's it, what I'm doing. It's brought up all the time. It's a huge issue. And and uh, the, the Orthodox community is, is, is trying to reach out to uh, people that are not observant. And, 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 and when among all people, there's different levels of obs observance. You don't so want me. you want to clump everyone together. I think you don't want me to come to Israel to try to put a stop to them gay pride parades. I mean, is that what you, would you want to sponsor me to go there? I'll go there and we'll put a stop to it the way God intends it to. Not just stand there and do some secret little disagreement. Let's publicly go where they have that public sin and address that public problem. Uh, you know, well, you don't have to go to Israel. I mean, uh, to the Middle East for that. How about no, I, America? I, I do that here in America. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll be going to homosexual parades uh, all over in in May and in June, and uh, we got chapters all over the country that are going there as well. But again, America is not found in the Bible. America is not prophecy, and so I know that's very arrogant for any Christians who think so. America is never mentioned in the Bible. It has everything to do with Israel, and I'm concerned about them. I'm concerned about gays parading in that holy city, and trust me, if I fly to Israel, something's gonna break, and it's probably good that I stay here in America because I'll probably break something. It's not good for me to go there. Uh, so what, what I hear in you is is that you feel like you're alone in this fight. Oh, no. And you feel that, that, that you need to go over there and, 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 and create this battle. But I could tell you that the, the, the Orthodox Jews are, have addressed this problem and, 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 and there is a struggle within Judaism. If you went to Israel, you'd just be joining uh, many of the Jews that are already uh, dealing with this issue. We've shut down homosexual parades in Florida, Santa Ana, Los Angeles, I mean Santa Ana, California. There are places that we've gone and shut them down. They no longer exist anymore. Irvine had a parade and a march, they're done. How come the Orthodox Jews don't have the power and the authority to shut them down? God's not limited unless we make a big stance. That's all I'm saying. Unless we're making a big stance to speak against them. I think the reason is that it says in the Bible that the Jews are a stiff-necked people. We're stubborn. We're not, we're not going to change if just because one person tells us to change. Um, I, it, it has to be a little more subtle and 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 it the the, the, the working I, I i see in israel i've been in israel i lived there for a year and a half uh, israel is becoming more and more religious yes. all the time and and i and i i believe that these uh these rallies that are against torah which in, which include a homosexuality which is against the torah i i believe that the rallies are getting smaller and smaller and and they'll fade away as 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 the people raise their consciousness well, and I, I, I don't so. think they need you to to create this battle I think we're doing this on our own I I, I think you can help join their fight but it, it, it won't be a, your, your own battle that you're fighting yourself you Moses commands that they be put to death stoned if I were a real Orthodox Jew and I took I took what he said in Deuteronomy literally they they would be put to death but if you're a good Christian Aren't you supposed to love your neighbor like yourself and, and, and act with compassion and love? That's the difference between Christianity and being a real Jew. If you're a real Jew, you should be putting him to death. Christians, I, I'm obligated to warn them. I'm doing my job as a true Christian. If, if a person was a real Jew, they would take them out and stone them as Moses commands. But then again, you don't have the temple. I don't expect you to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so this uh, goes back to my issue that you that, that I, I believe you're doing a good job being a Christian and I want to sub do whatever I can to support you in your efforts to, to, obs to observe your God in, in the way that you've been taught and, 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 and following your soul. But my issue 
with with what you're do what you're saying is that you're telling Jews how to, how to be Jews. Just and, follow what Moses said. I, I would appreciate it if a real Muslim and, and, would say follow Jesus, or a real Buddhist would say follow Jesus. That's who I am supposed to follow, right? Is it Moses? Since you don't believe in the Messiah, is it Moses supposed to be the one you should obey? And that's all I'm simply doing. Forget what Reuben Israel says. What does Moses have to say? That's what. That's who I would be concerned about. Are we following Moses, or have we modified what Moses said? So, I could put your worries to rest to tell you that we follow Moses. As we study the words, the the five books of Moses, every week. And throughout the week, we're constantly studying the five books. You know that. You know that the, the words of the Torah are, are, are something that we're, we're paying very close attention to, to each word, to, to the meaning behind each word, to the numerical value and, and, and all this, the, the hidden uh, mystical explanations of everything. And we do it through the rabbis. And the rabbis have carried through us the, the way to interpret the Bible. And so uh, you don't have to worry about the way we're interpreting the Bible. We're doing the best we can. And my concern is that you are going back and making your own interpretations and telling the Jews how they are supposed to do that. But I, that, I, I think you're extending your role um, doing that. You're first of all not going through the entire Talmud and, and, and making um, good arguments. Instead, you're, you're, you're just reading the Bible, coming up with your own arguments, and, and, and that is, will, will antagonize many Jews. Well, it's not antagonized. Uh, to me, if I talk to somebody uh, who is Jewish and they said they do keep the law, my first question would be, when was the last time you sacrificed an animal? That's what Moses commands. And if you can't sacrifice an animal, why can't you? What happened to that? We go back to square one. What happened to that temple? And what did we do to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Hey, but it was a decision, excuse me, a decision on the part of the Israeli leaders to let the Muslims have control over the that Temple Mount, right? Yes. In 67. Which I think is horrible. You know, somewhere in there, there should have been somebody that had a bit of a backbone. Uh, if I would have been there, it would have been worth going to jail and putting my life on the line just because God says no. Would you support uh, doing it for Israel to take it back physically now? I would I would not have a problem with that. It was theirs to begin with, and I say, God bless them. You need to do that. Get rid of, uh, get rid of that bastard religion and not kill them, but remove them and take that land back that was rightfully yours. That's me as an American. But what if that would provoke a Muslim war from all sides against Christians and Jews? Uh, I think it's already starting war, and we haven't done it. I think it's in them to war. That's just another excuse for them to want a war. But they've been wanting a war against Israel for quite some time. You and I have the luxury here on a Sunday in Los Angeles to walk around where right now that religion is beheading people like you and people like me and burning churches down. And so it is something that we're trying to bring up a little bit. What do you think about what happened in San Bernardino? Have, has uh, Southern California learned from that in uh, some fundamental way? We hope so. We definitely hope so. And because they were, they were normal until uh, Allah whispered into their ear. Yes, sir.